Hello and welcome to the third edition of the highlight show of the Jamaica Premier League. I'm Donald Oliver. Well, we are already into week three of the new season and things are shaping up nicely as teams jostle for early positions with only eight rounds of matches to be played. The action shifted to the Stadium East Field for match day three as another doubleheader was in order on Saturday. The first game saw the defending champions Port United taking on Malines United. It was an eventful game. In the first half, it was absolutely frenetic. Ricardo Morris there denied by Roger Williams after he was put through on goal. They were in this position on so many occasions, Port United. And they had chance after chance after chance in that first half. The follow-up by Brown wasn't the best and uh, Malign United were able to clear their area. Yep, Roger Williams came up front on several occasions in that first half. Ricardo Morris did well. The shot was over the top though, after controlling that one beautifully. Head into the byline there, he rifled that one into the palm of uh, Williams. That was Phillips with the effort. More first half action. Look at this shot from Seagull Knight. <laughs> Rocketing the crossbar and then the follow up couldn't be put away from James. Well, this effort was magnificent. And then the lovely ball played through, but again, Williams playing as a sweeper keeper on that occasion. In the second half, more of the same for Port United. And it was cleared off the line. Just before he could go across, the defender doing some good work. But Malign United had chance of their own. That's Farkasson's effort that was blocked by Kemar Foster. The game opened up even more. And this one saw Foster moving across to his left to provide the save. The game continue to move in favor of Malines United. Farkasson, or rather Nelson, not sure why he didn't go for the shot there, wanted to be provider in that position. And Port United were able to clear their lines and then in the final minute, final seconds really, Williams could not hold on and Solomon was there as the ball came off him and into the net. And with that, Port United had all three points. Three points, clean sheet. We, we my team, get some chances to, to score, but unfortunately, we did not, but at the last minute, we end up getting the three points. Coach, you got some chances in the first half, in the second half especially. Is it that bit of defeat, this one losing in the 96th minute? Yeah, yeah, it's a heartbreaker because we lost with the last kick of the game. I thought Portmore played well, you know, we countered and we got back into the game. Uh, it, the, ebb, the ebb and flow of the game, you know, I, if I had gotten a point, I would have been satisfied. But it's very disappointing to lose from a set player in the 96 minute of the game. Coach Gardner, seeing all those mischances, seeing Mullines start to impose some dominance in the game and creating a few chances themselves, were you a little bit worried that those mischances in the first half, especially, would come back to bite you? Um, I mean, we know football is like this sometimes. I mean, we would love to stick all other chances away, but unfortunately it wasn't like that. Um, we digged in. I think our keeper made a very good save to keep us in the game. Um, we, we left ourselves a little bit too open at, at, at times, which gave the opponent a few opportunities to, 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 to go through at our keeper. So we, we just have to improve on this. So late drama between Portmore and Dundee Holden, with Damana Solomon coming up with a late strike to hand Portmore all three points. 
Let's see if the second game of the doubleheader can bring the same drama and excitement as Mount Pleasant take on the Stars of the East Harbour View. Here are the highlights from the game. Mount Pleasant got us on the way and the first corner presented an opportunity for Chung. Traps it with the left, swivels with the right, swivels and shoots at the right. But finding the side netting, we'd hear from him again. Mount Pleasant had their chances. Harvey to Swaby. Watch Swaby now find Kesslon Hall and watch his header rebound off the post into the arms of goalkeeper Tafari Chambers. Who from the same passage of play, the same passage of play started the attack which led to the Harborview goal. Sule Makala giving away position, trod on the ball. Stewart finds the Knox Russell. His shot ricochets to Tyrese Williams. Williams is crossed low and good. And Chung's sliding finish. Didn't get much justice from your commentator in real time. But as we saw on replay, there was nothing wrong with his connection. And the man now has three goals. That's how he got number three. The first for the afternoon. Number, th uh, number three for him this season so far. And his team's first on the afternoon. They'd have a chance. Talbot swinging. But... His teammate was putting him off Tyrese Williams and he skied it and then this play watch Chung against Richie a couple step overs puts it on his favorite left foot finds a cross that Lennox Russell takes down with a very good first touch and then drives a low shot hard with the left foot to the goalkeeper's right at his near post beats him for power that's 2-0 game over producer is telling us that Chong did get a serious injury gifted the ball by Liston James he raced through we thought this was 3-0 but his left footed effort just running wide up the left hand post he can't believe it and even then he was holding his jaw across the Chong we understand that the young man has been taken to the hospital for an assessment of that particular complaint Coach, a disappointing result in the end. What went wrong for you today? Let me just read short and spice, you know. Uh, you see, when you start out lousy against a, a team like this who, who's moving the ball fast and, you know, quick, you're giving so much space to play the football. And you, also, you, you went down one little early. It's hard for you really to get back, you know, that, that momentum, you know, see. So I think we are to blame, you know. We played a little bit lackluster today, you know. So. Coach, at the top of this match, we mentioned that... Uh, Young, inexperienced team for you, but the performance today was like a more mature team in the league. Tell us about that today. You see, inside of the training sessions, we try and replicate these kind of circumstances, you know. Um, Sometimes we, we overload one team and put the pressure on. We're not afraid to expose the youngsters out here, and it's either you sink or you swim. Right, and there's enough motivation for them out there coming from some of the elders, you know. So it's just a matter of getting settled early. I want to talk about two of the youngsters you would have mentioned. Akwasa Chung started at centre forward, but then moved to a right wing position. Yes. What was the reasoning behind that? Um, everything was according to plan. Um, first thing we wanted to win the task and go with the breeze because we figured that we may have the lion's share of possession at that time and then we would ask young Williams to give as much as possible until half time and then of course we would bring in the genuine forward and thereby switching Kwasa out onto the flanks. So coach Ludlow Bernard gets his first win of the season for Harborview who continued to show good early season form. We take our first break on our highlight show in the New Look Jamaica Premier League powered by Digicel. Stay with us as we bring you more action-packed football right after this. Welcome back to the Jamaica Premier League highlight show powered by Digicel. Sunday saw another two exciting games with Cavalier FC welcoming new coach Harold Thomas and his done beholding outfit first up. Very hot afternoon for the one o'clock kickoff. And it was in fact a Cavalier that made the early impression going forward. Webster with a strike there across the box, but Shaquille Dar gets in the way. And here's the Christian corner that Andre Dice met side footed, just calmly sliding the ball to the left of the goalkeeper and giving Dunbar Holden the lead that they would hold to the end on the near post. 
It's a left-footed effort there from Brand English. Off target. Done for Holden. Roughed up there as Allen climbed into the back of Allen, of uh, Bailey. And uh, Jaden White forced on to make, called on to make a couple of good saves here. There were moments for Cavalier as they tried to rebound from the early goal that they conceded. But the defense for Dumble Holden, very, very sturdy. Young Atkinson, the 19-year-old, roughed up this afternoon by the big men. His effort there just over the top from the free kick. Yeah, the wind caused some problems for everyone on the field today because those aerial balls uh, just had a lot of swerve and movement on them. Congratulations on your performance today. Uh, you've done well to be named man of the match. Uh, it was a game that many expected Cavalier to overrun Dumbo Holden, uh, but you controlled the game expertly in the middle of the park. Uh, how difficult or how easy was it for you today? Were you surprised by the fact that that overrun never came? Well, we didn't surprise. We work um, very hard this week in training. So basically, this is our reward, the three points that we come here for. Rudolph, tough loss today. The high energy, high intensity game that we have come to expect from Cavalier didn't materialize today. What's the cause of that? Well, I can't put my finger on any one thing, but um, I think the early goal kind of stunned us. We're not able to play our usual, um, be our usual standards. And then the conditions was really breezy, very difficult to, to control the ball. And that's kind of one Another of Another thing that was very disappointing was the bluntness of the attack. We felt it wasn't, it was sort of one-dimensional, didn't get down the flanks enough, didn't create numbers up, didn't get the dumbbell holding defenders to defend with their face to goal enough. That's something that you feel you're going to have to really go and work a oh, lot definitely. on. Definitely. Not to make too many excuses, but we didn't have Shanil Thomas today. He was normally our point man. Um, so it, it made our life a little bit different. Um, we had to set up a little different to, to deal with his absence. Um, it's just a bad day for us. Um, we just have to work hard and come again. Well, with youths, there needs to be a lot of patience. All the best going forward, Thank Coach. You. I don't know, for you, was it easier than expected? No, no, no. Not, not an easy game. No way at all today. Um, it's nothing special we did. More than just work. Um, from Monday, we went back to training. That same Nikai Christian, he took the team and he was leading from the front. All the training sessions leading up today, he was the leader from the warm-up to the games. He yelled at them, he, you know, he encouraged them, he did everything. Hence the performance today from him. Coach Thomas doing the trick for the St. Catherine-based team who registered their first win in the competition after back-to-back -back losses. Next up was one of Kingston's favourite teams, Waterhouse, who welcomed the Clarendon-based Veer United. A battle here that was for the most part dominated by Waterhouse. Started out in very hot conditions, 31 degrees Celsius and very, very windy. Waterhouse in light blue on the hunt from early and Kenroy Howell with a cross inside and it's Lewis that gets in, gets in the way there here comes Ricardo Thomas brings Davis with a fingertip save Waterhouse continuing to press forward yeah another effort on goal there but a couple of deflections taking the pace off and Kadeem Davis busy of the two goalkeepers here he's diving to his left to prevent. There's this long ball from Ricardo Campbell I spoke of. Gets past the defense and Plummer with an opportunity here for the Veer team, but Nikolai Finlayson gets in the way. Siobhan Stewart, impressive in the first half, drags players with him. Howell takes the ball on the chest, but his right-footed effort goes way wide. Howell again here with a header, but straight to Davis. So Waterhouse with a lot of the play in this match, but unable to make it tell here. One of the best moments of the game here for the Veer team. O'Connor with that left-footed strike. Yeah, that's Ricardo Thomas with a left-footed effort that goes wide, doesn't trouble the goalkeeper. Shaquille Bradford, the substitute, gets by Lumsden, and his firm left-footed ball inside. Doesn't pierce the defense line. 
Pins with another left footed strike and Davis on the near post is there again. Pins with a strike. Davis with a save. And that's how it all ended. Ricardo, captain's performance today, also earning you the Man of the Match award. How difficult was it for you today to keep out this really talented and fluid Waterhouse team? It was a very hard performance. Both teams come out for the victory, but we stick to our game plan. Not the display that we had come to expect today from, from Waterhouse. It was difficult because it was a low block set up from, by, by Veer. Um, disappointed with the overall performance of the team? No, I'm not disappointed with the performance of the team. A little bit with the result. Um, we, we did move the ball, changing point of attack, but they defended well, and this is football. In their aspect of the game, their game by game situation, that the result will be like this. Okay, well, all the best, coach, going forward. Thank you. Coach Duki, again, it seems like you've come up with the blueprint when playing teams that are more fancied than your VR outfit. Um, is that the case? Well, yeah, um, we are very pleased with a point. We knew that. Um, Getting a point from this game would be a good um, achievement for us. Uh, we, we understand exactly what is against us, how prepared these teams are. Um, those teams were playing in CONCACAF League, so their preparation are way ahead of us. Um, I thought we did exceptionally well. We started a bit slow, so we allowed them too much um, room to play. But um, as the game progressed, I thought we did much better. So no goals in the final Sunday fixture, but we have one more game to come on the other side of the break in match day three in the new look Jamaica Premier League powered by Digicel. Stay with us. Welcome back. The final game in match day three saw perennial contenders Arne Gardens doing battle with Clarendon side Humble Lion. Before we look at the clash, we take a look at the Arne Gardens team who are gunning for top honours in this year's competition. Last year has been very rough. Um, we have been due to the delays because sometimes you know they say that league was supposed to start in November, so the delays it, it caused a lot of tension in the team because players were excited to play. But I think now everyone is really anticipating the start of the tournament. It's really frustrating. All right, um, training for the past year, um, knowing that there's no football, but we still have to keep motivated and keep motivating ourselves as players. But you know, nevertheless, we did what we had to do and the league is going to resume the 26th and uh, we are ready. This is our livelihood and to see football to return at the highest level, you know, it's, 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 we are grateful for it. It, it has been really rough, you know, but praises to my club, Arne Gardens. They have stick with us since the start of COVID until now, and I want to um, lift my hats off to them. The club itself has uh, bring, brought in measures for the players, like provide like stipends uh, and, you know, even though we are working, etc. But the club has provided that for us and that keeps us motivated. Training on Zoom it was a bit difficult, but Nevertheless, we did what we had to do, and uh, all is well. So training has been, it's been really competitive. Everyone is fighting for their spot. Um, I'd say that the coaches are working really hard with us, and everyone is, is working really hard. Our well, goal and expectations for the team is to at least win as much games as possible. As me as a player, I try to contribute as much as possible. My expectations is to take it to the top six and in semi-final and final after. Straight into the action we go now as Arne tried to get their first win of the campaign. Let's see how that encounter pan out. 
So it was a game that we were really looking forward to. The battle between Arnett Gardens and Humber Lion and they had several opportunities early up. Arnett Gardens and Hardly Barnes couldn't put that by the keeper. And an opportunity there for Cephas. Again, Harrison was in the way. It was Arnett Gardens, however, who struck first. It was in the seventh minute, Vision on Harris placing that pass, Shadim Rodriguez. And it really was a wonderful setup from Williams and uh, Harris with the goal. And the guns had several opportunities to get the equalizer. And uh, this one converted well by Janoy Cunningham, his first goal for Anik Gardens, the former Falmouth United player, rising high and uh, finally getting by Mikhail Harrison and his coach Alex Thomas loving that one. Cephas sending that one inside, Steve Clark's effort into the chest of the humble line defender and uh, this one from distance rifled by Martin. And another chance for Anik Gardens here and Cephas sending that one over the top. And then just before the half-time interval, Hardly Barnes again could not beat Mikhail Harrison. Second half now, early in the piece, ball played through and uh, Barnes dragging that one wide. And then the free kick here hitting the crossbar as Humberline came close. Cephas tried to do the spectacular, almost got some help. Wide of the mark, just. And here is Williams to the left of Rodriguez. Figured that he had that one covered. And then the ball over the top. Ball played through to Cephas, who was under pressure. Couldn't quite put that one on target. He was left disappointed, but he would get one more chance. And he didn't miss here. From about six yards out in the 75th minute, Sifa finally scoring his first goal for Arnett Gardens. And with that, they were ahead. Could have been a handball there, but the play continued. And Sifa got his due reward. Then Humble Lion tried to go all out to get the equalizer. Williams' effort. No problems there for Rodriguez and then the, <laughs> the shot from the halfway line from Rico Edwards saw Rodriguez in some trouble. What do you enjoy the most about your performance today? Um, well, we just um, stick with the team plan and just execute. Coach Price, where did it all go wrong for you today? I be believe that um, we, you know, we, didn't, we didn't press the Arnett Gardens team enough. They are a young team full of energy and if you don't pressure them then you won't be able to get the ascendancy. I think we played in patches and we, didn't, we weren't very consistent throughout the game and we're just going to have to continue to work. And here we are with uh, Arnett Gardens. The, how pleasing was that performance today? Today was pleasing knowing that we get to have a season with our first win and lots of shots and goal. It's very pleasing. Tell me, tell me a little bit, as a coach, working with a player like Cephas, so talented, so skillful, tell me, what is it like working with a player like that? Well, it's easy to work with Cephas and knowing that we're doing the technical drills and stuff in training. We try to get him to do his best as possible. We know that he's a very speedy player, so we we'll get him to try to be as clinical as possible in the final third and tell him to just enjoy the game. So Cunningham and Cephas cancelling out former Arnett player Harris's strike to hand the junglists all three points. Now those three points see Arnett Gardens kickstart their campaign and they lie in eighth position while Humble Lion are still pointless after three matches. Port United, they lead the standings followed by Harborview, Waterhouse and Veer who are all on five points. Seven goals were scored in the round but none better than this one from Harborview's Lennox Russell who cops our goal of the week. One on one, chunk. Off the left foot, finding Lennox Russell. Excellent first touch. Russell beats his man. Russell with the shot. Oh, what a goal! Lennox Russell announcing himself as a Harborview player with a clean strike. And the build up was impressive. Chong back 
Fucked up Ladiel Richie. Twist it, turn, pass, and launch the cross. Oh, Lennox was his first touch, was fantastic. Drove at his man, beat him. And off the left foot, it was low and hard. The keeper powerless. Two in Harborview. Excellent play from Harborview. We've mentioned the switch of play all throughout the game. Now it's coming in the attacking third. Russell there. David Swaby would be a little bit disappointed to see this one beating him at his near post. Yes. Well, whilst there were some good goals, the goalkeepers also did well this week pulling off some stunning saves. But Roger Williams of Maline United brought out the best one in our save of the week. You know, side of the corner kicks, you think that the advantage would be in favor of Fulham United. I hear the ball coming through to Ricardo Morris, deflected and onto the bar. Talk about that pass to Morris. The Mullines defenders there, are wide open from Thomas, and the advancing goalkeeper thwarted his effort. Well, that's it for the highlight show on match day three of the Jamaica Premier League, powered by Digicel. Be sure to tune in for the live matches and not miss a kick on match day four. Until next week, Godspeed. <laughs>